Folks, welcome back to the channel. Air of Carthage here, and we've had some good 2v2s that were courtesy of President Tyranid, aka Wicked. Appreciate him sending those. He also sent me this 1v1 battle, and I am very interested for you all to see this one because, yes, this is a 10 Bowman build versus the Vampire Counts of all people. Now, remember how badly the Vampire Counts can shut down bow play with zombie summons, dire wolves. All kinds of fast-moving units, they can be a real fit um, for bow units. However, that said, the vampires don't typically come with a ton of armor, and if they're not able to get to some of these units, and there's enough of them, it could cause a whole lot of damage um, versus the vampires. Especially you can see that this army is mostly made up of zombies for a front line, so not a lot of long-lasting chaff there. Now, they may not particularly need it in this case, other than to absorb some bow fire. Now, a couple of units to be aware of here. These Cairn Wraiths are going to be pretty darn quick at 48. The Black Coach is definitely going to be a potential archer killer and a very quick unit there. Vargulf, very vulnerable to bow fire, but also fast. Relatively same story for the Terrorgeist, although a bit better armor. Vlad, slow moving, well armored, but will have a difficult time getting close to archers. Vargeist and Black Knights would also be excellent archer killers. Uh, potentially, you could see the Crypt Ghouls do that, but they are a little slow and very vulnerable. Folks, this is going to be an interesting one. You can see where this matchup might go. Let's go check it out. All right, let's take a look at the deployment. Bretonia has deployed far and wide all the way across the map. Now, this is probably a good move because this wide deployment will prevent the vampires from getting a whole lot of action into any one point on the map and frustrating these archers all at once. So let's say that, for instance, Bretonia had deployed in something, say, like a triple line. You know, maybe archers here and then checkerboarding or something like this, you know, where you got a concentration here. Now, the vampires can, again, surround and focus their concentration on that small area, potentially lock it in and defeat it right there in the middle. Um, how do you like my telestration? Very beautiful, by the way. Um, here, how about this telestration? Let's get a, get a nice smiley going. Um, <laughs> in any case, oh my gosh, check this out. The Vargeist dove in early and against a Spearman at Arms, of all things, and got absolutely shredded by Archer Fire. Not entirely surprising because they're totally unarmored, but just look at that. The Pox Arrows, the Fire Arrows, and the Standard all mixing together. Remember, Fire Arrows are going to have a bit of a bonus um, against certain uh, regenerating creatures because they have innate Fire Weakness. Um, so yeah, that is going to be uh, really rough start for the vampires there and this this far and wide deployment is going to potentially cause issues and there's a couple of ways you could try to tackle this and i think the way that you definitely do not want to is head on head on into this is going to allow those archers to kind of fire in concavely from both flanks um, while bretonia kind of kites away the other option you have is to maybe take your army and try and go in and buckle one flank and then roll your way through uh, but of course, you'll be taking fire, and I would imagine if he does that, that then Wicked swings around here to put additional fire on those troops while they're busy. Now, we got another engagement over here. The Terror Geist is going to drop down. The Crypt Ghouls have already been completely shut down by a cavalry charge of Grail Knights and Spearmen at Arms. And uh, this Terror Geist does have some cover in the woods, but if these archers get after it, I do expect it's going to take some damage. Um, again, it is decently armored, which will slow down the damage to a degree. Um, but then when you get this happening, so King Lewin coming over, if he has Sword of Corone or anything too, a Terror Geist could find itself in some big trouble. There are some Grail Knights who do have anti-large. Again, 80 armor will help, but it won't stop a lot of this damage that's coming this way, especially with it being poisoned. There is the Sword of Corone, and that Terror Geist is going to get absolutely shut down. The uh, Black Coach hit the Spearman, and it was not microed on through to the Bowman, but... There was a Knights of the Lionhearted here to help stop it as well. And again, they come through. It looks like they have flaming damage, but they do not. However, it is magical damage. I don't know whether that plays into the Black Coach. doesn't look like it. The Black Coach is under heavy fire. And the Spear unit has done an excellent job bogging it down. So this is going to be another catastrophic loss for the Vampire Counts. Their main line is now just pushing forward kind of haphazardly towards the Archers, hoping to salvage something here. And uh, Vlad is kind of standing still. The Vargulf, I think there's too much going on for the vampires to counter. And it looks like they've kind of hit that point of being overwhelmed from a micro standpoint. There's many things going on. 
they kind of lose track. They've had a couple of frustrating turn of events, like losing key units early, and then it gets you distracted, and you end up in a really bad position. See, this knight was actually swung around a little too far. It needed to cut a little closer. Um, but even still, it's not much going to matter. The Terror Geist is near gone. The Vargulf is now surrounded. The Cairn Wraiths are taking some immense fire. Um, you can see the ones that are breaking through. You can see, they would have been better off in their old settings, where they would have had more physical re uh, resist. Now they only have 50%. So this does make them actually a little more vulnerable to the archers, though they are still a deadly unit and they can terrorize. They still have frostbite. So, uh, Wind of Death here from Vlad attempting to take out a few of the archers, but the positioning of the archers, you'll notice, was not in any such way that it was going to ever let him kill more than one of them at a time. Um, so we'll see what happens. Vlad cannot take on this entire crew over here. He really needs to be over here trying to support this fight, dumping in zombies, getting other units there, but I think it's honestly already too late. I think Bretonia did their damage in the opening seconds of the battle wrecking that Vargeist and some other key units. And with the vampires here, again, I think their only real prayer was to come after just one flank and maybe just keep a couple of zombies to delay movement on the other one. And then they needed to try and wrap through that flank quickly. Um, and then the farther they were away from the other flank, the less it would be able to provide fire and support. You can see here that the archers are basically kiting where needed, splitting up, kind of moving apart, and you're just basically using the cavalry and a couple of infantry units to play blocker. Um, and then, of course, you're using Lewin to goon out some of the key units. He's got that damsel of life supporting him. See here, the Grail Knights surround and destroy the Vargulf, and the vampires are going to get well and truly destroyed here. So just like the Bretonian trailer with its epic music and recounting the tale of how Bretonia would stand against all evil for the lady, they are certainly going to do that today, and Vlad is going to get sent home in shame. Now, you may be thinking, Eric, why'd you show this? The player just got absolutely beat up. This wasn't much of a match. Well, I, I showed this for a few reasons. Number one, certainly not to make fun of the player who is getting beat up in this match, because that happens from time to time. Whenever you make a pick that just doesn't turn out right, you get hesitant, and things get worse. Um, and that can certainly happen in a lot of situations. So why did I show this? I show it because I want you all to think about army picks here, and not only just like the fact that Bretonia picked this crazy thing with tons of archers, but then how your pick plays out too. So the vampires here were, were picked to use zombies essentially to absorb cavalry charges, um, and then Vlad was meant to be hard to snipe, and the Cairn race were meant to do you know some armor piercing, a little bit of frostbite, and terror. Uh, and essentially be able to help tear through cavalry, right? So you brought a few goons to go through big targets. You brought a little bit of chaff because you did not expect Bretonia to bring a bunch of archers. Usually when I play Vampire Counts, I don't come uh, with the thought that my opponent is going to have a lot of missiles because a lot of players just deny the Vampire Counts what they're good at, which is the ability to come in and shut down a lot of missiles. Some players will still try that. A lot of players will not try that. And so it's very possible that the Vampire Count player here built their army on the mindset that, well, Bretonia is going to rely on their cavalry because archers are too hard to guard. And, you know, a lot of people write off Bretonian archers because they're not particularly great. They're easy to terrorize. Um, they have low leadership. They have low armor. Their damage is none too impressive. Um, and so 10 Archers is a pick that I would have never guessed was coming at me as a Vampire Count player. I would not likely have come well prepared for, like in this situation. So then in that case, again, that is a lesson why to show this replay, to get you all thinking about that when you're playing multiplayer. But then another reason is to kind of talk about, well, what could you do with what you have to the best effect? Again, I told you my idea, which was to focus on one flank, maybe leave a zombie or two over here just to kind of play blocker. And then your main force pushes across in this direction. Now, if that happens, you know, and, I, and I'm wicked, of course I'm just going to fall back with some of my troops, give you minimal over here, and just try and slow you down while my archers keep going. So it's not a it's not a plan that would definitely work. Just saying, if he had his forces focused in one area, possibly he could avoid the fire of the units that were farther off and gain some traction on that flank. Where uh, in this case, his forces got split up, picked apart individually leaving all of his forces too weak in any one given location in order to find success. It would have been a tall order uh, to begin with, and I think that was probably pretty clear back from the army selection screen um, that that was going to be a tall order. So again, a lot of reason to show this is just army selection can be tricky in this game, especially when someone brings an unorthodox strategy. 
the table, something that you're not expecting. Um, and it really means that ultimately, a lot of times when you're building a multiplayer, um, a couple of things are true. One, you kind of have to respect the different builds that a player could bring. But as you try and build your army to be more preventative of a broader scope of builds that can be brought against you, it potentially makes you weaker at being like the jack of all trades and the master of none, right? So you got to make that decision pre-battle. Am I going to be the master of something very specific? In this case, Bretonia was going to be a master of tons of damage, right? So Bretonia went all in on damage. There was no defense. There was no longevity. It was all damage with this army. Um, and the vampires, on the other hand, went also, you know, kind of for damage strategy. You got a black coach, a Vargolf, um, Vlad, some Karen Rays, so it's definitely a damage strategy. Very low armor, very sh uh, few shields, and very limited mobility here. And the limited mobility, I say limited, there was some mobility, but it's not near enough. Like it now, for instance, this build had come in with a whole bunch of black knights. That could have been very useful, but again, a Bretonian player typically probably, or playing against Bretonia Vampire Count probably doesn't consider a lot of Black Knights because they probably don't fare that well against a lot of Bretonian cavalry. Um, so again, it makes that, that pick tricky, um, even though there are units. So like, for instance, a lot of Black Knights in this case would have been a real danger for Bretonia, a very real danger. Um, but that pick was not made, um, and so it was not. Anyway, you all tell me what you think. What would you do if you showed up in this fight and you're facing 10 Bretonian archers with the Vampire Count army? Do you think there's a way to win that? Do you not? Do you have a Vampire Count build that you would have brought against Bretonia that you think would have been able to stop this type of thing? Anyway, you all tell me what you think about some of that. Air of Carthage signing up for now. Hope you all enjoyed it. See you soon with some more action in Total War Warhammer 3.